Hey Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs post-game show podcast and a series win on the road for your Chicago Cubs. Cody Bellinger, big star, Hayden Wisniewski, big star, and the Cubs bounce back after a heartbreaking loss early this morning. Yeah. Early oh this God, morning. Like 15 hours Yes, ago. in some ways this was a doubleheader. Uh, Luke Stuckmeyer, Ryan Herrera, Cody Del Mendo, uh, vibe with us on the CHGO Sports YouTube page. Best way to enjoy the experience is to make sure you go ahead and subscribe to that. And we're having a good time. 5-3. Cubs beat the D-backs, get the series win. All is well in Cubland. And now they return home to face the Marlins. Things aren't looking so bad. Cody's got the beer bat already poured. The, no, it's, it's not, not poured, poured yet. yet. No, mm-hmm. but he's got the blue moon ready to go. Yeah, we can pour. Warming we can slightly, pour. just a little bit. We can pour it while we discuss. You want to pour it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll get to Wes Nesky. He might even be your dedication. I'm not sure, but I know what second segment we're going to spend a lot of time about the bullpen, Wes Nesky, where all that goes. All the pitching changes and stuff today. A lot of pitching changes. I'll tell you what else was awesome to see the last two days. Cody Bellinger. Yeah. Cody Bellinger, not... Last night he had the triple, and he also had a huge hit late in the game that just went foul, but he roped it, and then ended up striking out. Today, better game. I mean, the offense has been, the offense has been good enough. There's no question about it. People but if are, you can get Bellinger going. People are saying Cody Bellinger just wanted, to ha- just wanted Cody Rhodes to have his moment. Oh, to let the moment sink in. That's a Cody courtesy, if you will. Yeah, because it's the year of the Cody's, you know, so, you (laughs) know. Because Bellinger took all that time (laughs) to sign a contract, and then, you know, the build-up to WrestleMania, Cody Rhodes, he had to finish the story. He finished the story. And during this this time, Belly was slumping. But it's been a few weeks now, I think. Maybe it's just been a week. I don't know. I think it's been a week. It's just been a week. Whatever. Don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. But... Time has worn on, and now Cody Bellinger is ready to continue right. what is I have proclaimed as the year of the Cody's. So, credit to him. Yeah, and a humble of you. Yeah, and um, <laughs> you know we're looking at Bellinger, and the, obviously, like we 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 look at the contact quality numbers, and they're not great. Like they're not like completely awful, but they're more league average when when you're paying him as much money as you are. You're trusting yeah. him to be a middle of the order bat. You want those to be better. Uh, today he went out and he put. Obviously he had the the two hits. The the home run was the go ahead and eventually game winning run. Um, he had three balls in play that were over, that were hard hit balls. It was uh, ninety eight point eight, one hundred point five, and one hundred four point six miles per hour off the bat. So like, obviously swung the bat the bat well today, and and he came through for the Cubs when they needed him. And and this is what we keep talking about since they you know since Saya went out and they put him on the IL. Uh, a couple days ago, like, they're going to need in his place everyone to step up and contribute more than than they were previously. And, like, Bellinger, again, trusting him and hoping he can be a the middle of the order bat the Cubs need, especially with say out, becomes even more important that he does that. So today, and you mentioned yesterday, obviously, it was a triple yesterday, right? Yeah, triple. Um, Good signs from him at the plate as far as, like, he's had a slow start. We know that. But there's a long season to go, and if you can be patient, hopefully he turns things around. And these are good signs that maybe he's, he's starting to do that. If I were scoring, he would have had a triple again today. <laughs> if you were scoring, Stucky yeah. Stucky stats. Yeah, yeah Stucky, Stucky stats. stats. He had triples stats. and back-to-back games. I saw uh, Corey Friedman was watching the game and said, uh, Cubs won this series because I gutted out those late West Coast games. We earned it. <laughs> That's right. We all did. We all earned it, brother. But I really earned it. You you gutted it out and earned it. I did what worked last year. I I wore the I'm ready to be heard again shirt. Yep. I took Master Boney for who you got. I did all things. 
that manifests Cubs wins. Yeah. I wore All shorts right. today. Cody didn't even wear shorts. I did them. I did the shorts today. Yeah, right. Credit to you. Yeah. And not, Kevin not. wore pants, <laughs> which I sometimes I he no- forgets. Do I, <laughs> do I normally wear shorts? I don't know. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> do, not to bus toss Corey, but wasn't he on the West Coast for some of these games? I don't know when he got back. I, I can't remember. Back. Thanks, uh, Nick. He Credit had to me. Back. I think yeah, we I think let it off easy. Week, last week. Yeah, that's when, all, that's when I was walking his dog. Now, Brendan yeah. Brendan mm. has been on the West Coast yeah. for all of these games, and yeah. I, I don't want to hear from no, him. He's let him. us know a few times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Do, do we have a super chat before we get to the uh, beer bat? Uh, we Blue do beer from chug, Chris. Chris Pagero. Yeah. He's a diehard. Feeling a little down today, but Cody's beer chug makes me smile. Y'all are awesome, and go effing Cubs. Ah, beautiful. Chris. Any uh, predictions on the beer bat chug? Any predictions from uh, the, the chat out there? Everyone this season has been under twelve seconds. That yeah. I know. Monday was nine point six nine. Is that what I got? Is that what I, I think yeah, it was nine point six nine? Yeah, nice by the way. Yep. Yeah, I think that's why I remember it because someone said nice in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, so. right. Let's see what what other predictions we I got. I didn't set there. a timer on this show, so I won't know when Can the breaks the, are either. Ch- Thank you. Yeah, we got a few. Yeah. Ten point three, eleven point three, eight point eight. 8. 8. Uh, eight seven is, six from people Sander. People like fill up the bat. This, this is like a I don't know how many ounces fit in here, but I always just put a twelve ounce can in here. This is what I always put in here. I feel like we should have a mark so we know it's you know it's like it's like the pine tar pine tar level on your bat. It's got to be a certain height there. It can only go. So you know, I'm not telling y'all how to chug beers out of a beer bat, but this is how I do it. All right, there is no rules. Warmed <laughs> for just a couple minutes. <laughs> If we, if, if we want to create rules. There are rules. We just change them for every show whenever we want to. <laughs> All right. Ten seconds even. Mark Pelkey. All right. Let's start, give us the dedication. Oh, uh, it starts when the beer hits his lips. It ends when I say so. This beer bat goes out to Hayden Wisniewski because they don't win today without him. Point blank, period. They don't. The bullpen was taxed. They call him up. So that means that he flew in from wherever the hell he came from, with, from Iowa, I guess. And I Alderaan, I think. And then Where's Superman came from? out and pitched really well against <laughs> Krypton. Pitched really well against the team that was just in the World Series. Like mighty impressive. Uh yeah, yeah. Here we so, go. Here, here we go. Cody yeah. Del Mendo with the Blue Moon Beer Bat Chug right, after a series win on the road. Here we go. And begin. Here we go. Cody Del Mendo. Wow, it's like he never left the beer bat chug. And he's right back at it. He's almost down to the handle. Almost down to the handle. Del Mendo's done. I got a nine seven three. What do you guys have? Nine six four. At a ten point oh seven. Well, it's under ten. It's under. I think we're under ten. Then is that a record? Average out. We're under ten. Under ten. Impressive. Impressive. You know what else is impressive? The Cubs now have (laughs) series wins on the road against the Diamondbacks, team that went to the World Series. Pretty good. Uh, they got another one against the Mariners, thought to be a playoff team, yeah. pretty good, and they have home series wins against the Dodgers and the Rockies. One of the pretty two, good. pretty good. All, pretty good. I mean, considering I think, the way their roster has been depleted early this uh, season, right? And got to got to tip your hat to them. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, jump at the people who were very very angry last night. We all had the right to be angry last night. Hell, that's why I was. I've been in a bad mood all day until that game ended and they won. Um, like, what? They're eleven and seven. You 11 can. And seven. You can. Half came out of first. I believe you can confidently say they should probably have thirteen or fourteen wins and be in first place right now. So there's two sides to 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 what you're saying. Like, yes, they have all these injuries. Blah blah blah. Uh, they should have a better record. They should be in first place. However. It's better than being below 500, being, you know, at 500. Uh, so, you know, again, I guess I'm just giving, I'm letting the people who have been angry, uh, you know, I'm letting them know that it's okay because we all should strive as fans to want them to be better than even this. So, uh, to me, I, I, I hear it, but at the same time, uh, I'd rather <laughs> celebrate more than just be mad all the time as well so yeah i'll take this considering everything that's happened uh again that and that's why i said wesneski's coming up and just contributing right away i mean that's huge man that is yeah. absolutely huge considering big. where this bullpen was at uh in terms of how depleted it was and and, and rested 
Hayden Wisniewski came in and to me, like, yeah, he didn't score. He didn't drive in the runs or anything, but I really don't th- think they win without him today, man. I really no, don't. Yeah, it would have been tough. Great. And, and, and it's not just today. It's like everything that they could do over the yeah. next few games. They were able to set other guys today. Yes, like everyone's at least everyone's at least one day fresher because it was Nesky, except for Smiley, obviously, who came in at the end. But everyone else in that bullpen is at least one day fresher because it was Nesky came in, had success, and was able to go four innings. And like we talked about when, when they took out Wicks, um, you know, probably the things changed game-wise just because of where they were at in the lineup. Uh, Diamondbacks wise, and I think it was a, it was a one, or it was a tie game at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so you put you put in a guy that you know was good at getting le- uh, righties out last year versus the guy. You know, it, it's to me, it was mostly matchup based. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I hope they're, uh, or I don't know if they're asking Craig Council about that at the moment, but um, to me, it, it seemed more matchup based just because of who was coming up in the order, and obviously there was two guys on, one out. And you need to get out of that inning with with a scoreless inning. And Wisniewski comes in and and he does his job, and not only in that inning, but then is able to go three more innings. Gets that four innings, what one hit, two strikeouts. Like um, I think I looked, and it was like three whiffs on the the on eight <coughs> swings on the sweeper. Um, so that looked solid, and it was just yeah, it was just overall for a guy that had to be disappointed to not make the opening day roster, like for sure. Um, and then comes back up and is asked to just jump into the middle of a game into a, a tough situation in the in that inning, and he's able to go out and again save the rest of the bullpen. That's yeah. That's, it was just a huge performance for him, and that's yeah. I, I mean, the offense obviously put on runs and helped out too, but like yeah, who knows what who knows what the Diamondbacks are uh, are able to do if it's nice. He doesn't have the kind of day. I was just going to say when the game started and it was one nothing, I thought it was going to be a six nothing loss. Same. That, I was that's with you. how it felt to me. So <laughs> for me. Getting the lead back, like Wesneski was a huge part of the win, but the offense getting those runs and and providing that opportunity. Mike Talkman and Jan Gomes. And and Cody Bellinger. I feel like yeah. there there are signs, as I mentioned, there are signs that Bellinger's back. There are signs for me that Talkman is the perfect fourth outfielder. I mean, has he not shown you that the last year? That he has been everything they could ever imagine for a fourth outfielder. Yeah, I mean, he's over like today, the hit it was good to see him pull a ball and make really good contact. I think the thing for him this year has been the fact that he's found ways to get on base. He hasn't exactly been getting hits. He's been good but defensively. He's, but How he's about been that getting on base center? somehow, yeah. some way, mostly because of walks. But yeah, defensively, uh, for the most part, has been really solid. Um, yeah, I, I I agree. He's been a really good fourth outfielder, and he's fitting in. Uh, perfectly, or he's now going to get a lot more run with, uh, you know, with Saya out there. So, you know, like, I think Talkman, he has a role on this team. And I, my good friend, Dom Frederick, said it last year that he's like Chris Coglin, and he's going to be overlooked by a lot of casuals. He's going to be overlooked by a lot of people who don't, like, that just kind of look at this team more casually and, not, you know, not take him very seriously, but he finds a way to get on base. He can play all three outfield positions, and he gives you really good at bats. He makes pitchers throw pitches, right? So yeah, he fits. He fits in good on this team and the role that they asking they're asking him to do, mm-hmm. and which isn't even close to what That's they it. are asking him to do last year. It's it's a role. I'm not talking about a star or or a superstar. Right. He just plays his role really well. I like really to well. talk about having good players that impact your your team. Yeah. yeah. And whenever he ha- seems to have the opportunity, he seems to find a way to to make good plays. Now we mentioned. I said Ballinger might be back. Michael Bush never left. I mean, he just keeps doing it. I can't believe they walked Morrell to face Bush. I know they had Mantiply on on the mound, who's a lefty, mm-hmm. but like the way that Bush has been hitting the ball yeah. and hurt them this series, yeah. Yeah. the yeah. fact that they walked Morrell intentionally to face Bush, crazy. Yeah, it seemed like mm-hmm. it was to set up a potential double play. So yeah, but it was like mm-hmm. what well, Bush has hit pretty well. What was the I don't remember what exactly his stat line was on the road trip, but he was hitting like three thirty three or something like that with yeah. it, like a twelve hundred OPS. I on got the, it right here. Bush. Yeah. There it is. Tony, yeah, Tony Drake had the stat. Yeah. So on the nine game West Coast trip, 
333 average, 421 uh, on base, 818 slugging for a 1239 OPS. Eight five home runs, eight RBI. Yeah, Michael yeah. Bush. <laughs> that's a pretty good West Coast. That's trip. That's a very yeah. good West Coast that's trip. And yeah, so like, I understand to set it up and to to, to try to set up a double play chance with one out in the inning. I believe, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, like, and to do it to, to Michael Bush, like Michael Bush could very easily, as we saw, very easily disrupt those plans. And the thing that Im- I think a lot of people won't agree with what I'm about to say, but. I was probably most impressed by Michael Bush today than I have been the entire road trip because he hadn't showed me anything against lefties at all as a Cub. He got that hit off a lefty, Mm -hmm. and he Mm -hmm. hit, like, he impressed me a little bit last night, even though he didn't get on base. He went 0 for 3. Well, okay, he got on base because of a walk. Didn't get a hit. But against a lefty, he didn't get a hit. He took, he hit the ball hard, and he hit it to the warning track a couple times, but they were Mm -hmm. caught, right? Today, against the lefty in a big moment, got the base knock to drive in Bellinger. Um, and listen, like, if you really want Michael Bush to be your everyday first baseman and, is, and, and, and matchups don't matter and all these things, if you really want him mm. to be that, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to replace an Anthony Rizzo. But if you, ever, if you really want him to be the, the guy for the next five, six years, you you need him to show that he can hit against left-handed pitching too. And yeah. Most of the damage he'd done on this road trip was against righties. Mm-hmm. So to see what he did today in a big moment against a lefty shows me that this guy can hit lefties too. And it at least instills a little bit more confidence. So, again, yes, hitting a home run five straight games, it was it's impressive. He's a big reason why they won those games in Seattle and uh, obviously in the series too. But for him to show that he can hit lefties as well, or at least start to show it, was an encouraging sign for me. Because that's the only thing at this point that I had a question for is like, can this guy hit left-handed pitching? And I I thought today he showed it, and even a little bit yesterday, even though he didn't get a hit, he hit the ball hard, hit the ball to the warning track, you know, deep hard outs, you know, so that's that's kind of how I how I take that. And I yeah. question if he could play defense at first too. And so far he's been yeah, yeah. some nice. I was, good I was just about to say the inning from hell yesterday. He saved it. He got yeah, him out of the, the inning, the Morel. picking Morel. Yeah. I mean, with an unbelievable scoop to end that inning. I mean, he he's been impressive. He had a great road trip, no, no question. He, yeah, no, it's uh, yeah. Defensively, he's been good. He's been good enough that you're not worried about it. And then offensively, the road trip, he hit the crap out of the ball like it's you I don't know how you could ask for much more from Mike what Michael Bush did for you this road trip I don't know what the odds were when the season started for Michael Bush rookie of the year Ooh, they've but I bet if you had gone to to Circa Sportsbook before the season started yeah. you'd be feeling pretty good about your chances for whatever odds you got preseason on that because everybody's looking to Milwaukee and other places for rookie of the year you Milwaukee, saw what he just did on Dodgers. the West Coast. That's a pretty pretty good yeah. start. I would First say month. Churios and uh, Yamamoto had the lowest odds. Yeah, or the highest. Odds, I guarantee he wasn't one or two. Right. No. So yeah, no, he's he's off to a great start. If you were at Circa and you placed that bet, like, man, just mm, go get a, go get a lottery right. ticket now while yeah. you still can. You know, or place another bet on or, Circa too. Or place <laughs> right, another yeah. bet. Yeah, you know. more. Uh, Circa Sportsbook. We're gonna. Circus Sportsbook is the uh, they pre- they're the presenting sponsor for Friday One Twenty Club. They make it happen. They make it happen. They're great people, um, and I love using their app. Uh, three reasons: the tight money line splits. Games strive to be a minus one ten split on the Circus Sports menu, unlike other sports books, which may use minus one fifteen or minus one twenty splits. Circus Sports keeps as low money as possible on large market bets, especially compared to other books. They don't limit players based on their winnings either. Every player has the same limits, unlike other books who do limit winning players. They encourage bettors to download and explore all sports betting apps, apps available to compare lines from each sports book. Um, and then their their big thing, customer service, man. I, I hate talking to chatbots because it's always a waste of time. They don't make you do that. They talk. You get to talk to real people when you have an issue. Um, 
All aspects of the app are being run by the same team that runs the main Circa Sportsbook at Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas. So download the Circa Sports Illinois app at circasports.com slash Illinois-app. To sign up today, also be on the lookout for Circa events, watch parties, and tailgates. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text GAMB to 833-234 or visit areyoureallywinning.com. Yeah, and you mentioned the Friday 120 Club presented by Circa, but the other reason that I'm talking about the Friday 120 Club is because if you want to go to Friday, Cubs, Marlins, 120, hopefully sunny. I don't know exactly what the weather is. Show to Imanaga on the yeah, mound. Imanaga on the mound. You're going to want to get your ticket with Game Time. Sizzle. Um, game Time is the only app I use for buying tickets. I went to a concert recently, uh, this uh, place called Radius. I don't, I don't know how far it is from here, but... Um, I was able to go and get my tickets at the best deal I could have found was with game time. Um, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Uh Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees and you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Game Time is obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. Find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick the section, and Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHGO for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHGO for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And I didn't mention the, the Friday 120 Club. Even if you don't want to sit in the bleachers. Right. Yeah, like you can still you, hang out before and after. Yeah, you hang out before. You see the shirt. We got the shirt on the screen right now, the Friday 120 Club. Sick. Um, but you have, you go hang out before at Murphy's with mm-hmm. Cody and Braggs and Sarah and Emma are supposed to be there as well. And then you go, if you want, if you want to get your, your ticket with game time, you can go sit somewhere else that's not in the bleachers. Then you go to almost home afterwards for the post-game right. party with those guys. And if you want to sleep on Cody's couch overnight, Braggs yeah. has not claimed dibs on that's it true. yet. Yet. No, I'm not allowed. Only Braggs is sleep on my couch. Oh, okay. <laughs> I that's very big. I didn't, I didn't realize. I thought, that was, I thought mm-hmm. it was an open invitation. No, there's no open invitation. Especially in the live couch. YouTube chat. Those are our people. Uh, speaking of that. They we, are our people, but I... <laughs> It, my house you is need a to do some background place. checks on a few. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a couple super chats I noticed going through there. Yeah, we got four. Uh, four. Yeah, so we'll we had the crit, start with one. Oh, we started with Chris. Chris. Ginga Nation has renewed my diehard membership. Fly that W. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I saw somebody else in the chat saying Thank you, Ginger Nation. Uh, they got a free do right donut by flashing the diehard card. I told you. <laughs> I tried to tell you guys. It's it's a powerful yeah. piece of plastic. True. Hawkeye says, uh, hype the series win against the runners up from the World Series. Love to see us having a winning record after a tough stretch go Cubs. That is, that, I mean, that is so true. And uh, Cody Burton says for four ninety nine, just happy to hear Luke, the dad podcaster of all podcasters, voice of reason at a decent time of day again. Amen to that, <laughs> brother. Amen yeah, to that. You're not wrong on that one. Wow. This is really technically two in one day we're doing. Yeah. No, it's, it's like we're working double time. Yeah, I didn't yeah, go to sleep get, until should. like 3.30 in the morning. So 3.30 this morning. Yeah, that's, like when I was, I, that's when I went to sleep. That's just when I usually fall asleep. I was exhausted. Yeah. You, fall, you fall asleep at 3.30 every morning? So not every morning, but sometimes. Yeah. Holy smokes. There are times. When I was Ryan's age, that was common. I'm getting up. I got to go. I got to get to work at 4.30 every morning now. It's Worth unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, we see, yeah, yeah. That's tough. Not a 4.30 guy. I'm jealous. <laughs> Uh, Cubs made a couple of roster moves before the game. Uh, you saw one result was Wes Neske was in the game today. They also called up Colton Brewer, reliever, and Luke Little and Daniel Palencia down to AAA. Merriweather moved to the 60-day injured list, as we kind of mm-hmm. guessed at right after his injury was announced. 
to make room for Brewer on the 40 man. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. They needed some fresh arms, obviously. Yeah. Listen, th- this this season is about not just opportunity for the for the franchise because it is. It's an opportunity to get back to the postseason. It's an opportunity to take the North and, as Ryan Poles likes to say, not give it back. Like take it and, and hold on to it now for a while. Yeah. But it, it's a it's a massive opportunity for a lot of these young players. Some are have already started that opportunity and are trying to get back at it, like Keegan Thompson and Hayden Wesneski and maybe Matt Mervis or, you know, whoever it might be. It was nice to see him come in. And, I, you know, I was thinking on the drive here when and it was announced that Wesneski was coming back, he'd been stretched out as a starter when he left spring training and Cactus League play in Arizona. And I thought, well... You know, we were trying to come up with guys last night that if Al Zalai continues on this trend, tied for the Major League lead in blown saves this season with three, I'm a big Al Zalai fan, love the person, love the energy, love him as a reliever. If, it were to, if his struggles were to continue and Craig Council had to start looking for even just a temporary closer, Wesneski is a guy whose name still pops in my head. And I know he was down at AAA because he wasn't doing as well. But he's got that kind of stuff. I think you, I don't know who you were talking to the officer. Like, his, he may have the best well, pitch on the Cubs. Yeah, his sweeper may be the best pitch that the Cubs. Uh, so if, that, when it's, it's on, is the it's best a, pitch. That would be a lot. Again, I said yesterday it would be a lot to throw at Ben Brown. It would be a lot to throw at Hayden Wesneski. I don't know if it's fair to either guy. I always hated what the Cubs did with Jeff Samarja. Bouncing mm. him between reliever. I was just like, man, this guy was was a high pick. You gave him all this money. Just let him start. Whether it's figuring it out at Iowa. So that part of me says, no, don't do that. But when you see the stuff they get guys with, both of them stick out to me as, I wouldn't mind seeing him get a shot a couple games. Well, yeah, well, with Wisniewski, I I say no until he can prove that he can get lefties out. Okay. Like, I, can't I'm be, okay. I'm, I'm, and maybe, you're maybe, right. I'm not there yet either. Maybe if, there's a, if, if it's a, a situation where you do have – Three righties coming up, like in the ninth. Yeah, he showed like today. Yeah, he could still get righties out well until we could see him, like consistently getting lefties out. Like that was what Adbert had to prove last year, right? And he and he did that and was good for a while, um, until was next he can do that because we know that was his big issue last year was getting lefties out. And when he if he can start to do that consistently, then I then I think because of the kind of stuff he has, you may be looking at a better argument. But until that happens, I can't. I wouldn't say I, I see him as an option for the closer right now. Right now, because like he could totally Agreed. change it. He can improve. He can develop another pitch that is better against lefties. Like not putting any of that past him, but like right now. But if um, you're spitballing names, they're probably on the grease board. Intriguing, intriguing yeah. because of the kind of stuff he has. I think. Uh, my, you know, you mentioned that he was starting in AAA because he wasn't doing so well. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that he's in AAA because they wanted to stretch him out to be a starter and they didn't have any room for him to be a starter. And he wasn't – and, and in, the cl- in the Cubs' eyes, he wasn't first on the totem pole to come up. Wicks was. Yeah. Wicks was ahead of him. Well, I'm talking about after the steel oh, injury. Oh, gosh, yes, yes. You know what I mean? Agreed. Like, they could have gone with him instead of As- uh, Assad, you know. But even after that, they went with Ben Brown. Um so, you know, he's getting his opportunity. I, I'm not – like I know it's out of the bullpen, and he's I, – I tweeted this whenever the news dropped that, like, I'm intrigued to see how they're going to use him moving forward. Now, did I expect them to use him in a piggyback role today? No. Like, first, first reaction, no. Um, it worked out. Great. Awesome. If that's, if that's how they're going to do it, then that's, that's fine considering – uh, you're not getting a lot of length out of Wicks right now anyway. Uh, but, you know, like, I wouldn't be surprised if down the road, maybe they move him into the rotation and they put Assad into the bullpen, as we've talked about with his versatility, or with Ben Brown because, you know, rookie pitcher, don't know how many innings he can throw this year, you know, mm-hmm. like these types of things. Wesneski at least has a year under the belt. And to me, this year, it's not necessarily a prove-it year, but it's more of a try to take steps forward from last year. We saw last year he could be really good against righties, really struggled against lefties. 
So can he improve against lefties in 2024? That's a big question. I thought today he did pretty well. Uh, Jock Peterson hit a liner that was hit right to Michael Bush. Thankfully, that saved a run. Uh, but obviously, outside of that, I felt like he was getting a ton of weak contact no matter who he was facing. So, and yeah. he had some nice strikeouts, some filthy ones too. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it's to me like he can he can be kind of like what Keegan Thompson has been these first two appearances that he's been like we were so many people were high on Wesneski entering last year um and then as the season progressed he was so up and down and no one like his stock is really down coming into this year so Mm -hmm. this is again I wouldn't say it's a prove it year but it's more of a can you take steps forward from last year because again he was a rookie last year it's not like he's been the league for four years and you're still waiting for that potential to you know blossom it's it's just trying to take that next step as a young pitcher in the major leagues and and do exactly what he was asked to do today and play his role, which was as the guy coming in for Jordan Wicks and, you know, eating some innings to save the bullpen, right? Yeah. So whatever role that they decide to use him in, I just want him to be able to embrace that and excel in it at the end of the day. But if if they did decide to put him in the rotation, considering how things are going – I'm intrigued about it at least because, like I said last night, I'm I'm worried about guys getting hurt. I'm worried about those types of things, and that's why you need arms, and that's why you need guys to be effective, and you need your starters to go deep. So, yeah. Yeah. And and, uh, you just want to see improvements out of him this year. And he may not be up the whole year, right? Like, like the. And it might not be linear, as Theo used to say. Yeah. The the bullpen situation is probably going to be pretty fluid all year. Wouldn't it be like I'm not saying I'm expecting him to get option down tomorrow, but wouldn't it be surprised if to kind of again mess around with just how things go, um, and mm-hmm. especially I know like Luke Little and, and Daniel Palencia have to be down in the minors for the minimum amount of days uh, before they can be called back up. So uh, I, I do I do feel like there's going to be some playing around with uh, or just fluidity to the bullpen situation, mm-hmm. uh, especially with guys that have options. But um, for Wisniewski, like yeah, just everything we've been saying, but I. I for that ninth inning, I've already seen people in the chat, and I saw people on Twitter, like and in the Discord, like why did they take him out? Why yeah, right. did they put in Smiley? Whatever, like the Smiley situation, like okay, maybe maybe he's just not the best option in general. But you're they're looking at a guy in Wasneski who against the lefties last year they had a 986 OPS last year. That's what we talked about. He just wasn't getting lefties out enough to trust him, and he was going up against a bunch of lefties that inning. Um, the move made sense. And again, I said, like, Smiley just may not be the best option you have in the bullpen, but a lot of your guys have pitched lately. He only threw two pitches yesterday, even though he did pitch in the game yesterday. It was two pitches. So, like, it was kind of a, like, this is the this is the option we have right now. We have to go with it. He got the job done, so, like, you obviously can't complain too much about it. He, he gave up the home run, but then got the other outs that he needed to get. So, um, but, yeah, for Wesneski, I think the real improvement is – getting to a situation where – or getting to a point where in that situation you don't have to be taken out for a lefty or with two right. outs left in the game after you've been mowing guys down because you've proven that you can get um, lefties out with more consistency. That is the improvement. That's the area I want to see improve. The at. only thing that I'll – and I'm not even really clapping back at you about this. It's more of just about like he had a three-run lead. It wasn't a one-run game. And Drew Smiley pitched yesterday, and he's – honestly, he's – Well, like pit- I said, he threw two pitches. I like, know. It was two pitches. I – Again, not clapping back about it. I'm just saying that why not just let him, you know, give him the opportunity. It's, again, if it was a six run, run lead or like five, six, if, if it was more than if it was more, I'm fine with it. But in a, a three run game against a quick striking offense, I, under, I understand the move. As, as made you look as silly the night before. <laughs> at, yeah. As <laughs> we've the morning before. Yeah. As we've the seen same morning. the Cubs <laughs> the Cubs have given up leads so far this year. So I again I I get it. I get it. So I'm not again, not even clapping them back in disagreement it's just would have been nice to not have to even get near us up because after smiley gave up the home run that's when we saw them get near us up mm-hmm. and it's just kind of like oh i wonder if wesneski would have just got been able to yeah. get these outs you know I, it's in hindsight looking you know but you get what i'm saying yeah. all i know is that for a team where the bullpen has been knocked by injuries maybe it was shorthanded before the season even started a bullpen, as the kids like to say, that has been sus, if oh, you will. Man. Good worse of the youth. It was nice to be able to talk in this postgame show about a bullpen that was pretty good. 
Can you just start talking about Stuart Smalley again? Don't sus. What else is sus in your world? Uh, is there anything else that's sus? When Cody doesn't wear pants to the post game show, sus. <laughs> when yeah. Ryan okay. wants to just go along with everything David Ross says, that's sus. <laughs> they didn't call me. When the Lil chat Ross doesn't agree nothing, with me apparently. on everything, they're sus. When you when you don't win when we don't vote you for the who you got one. when I don't win who you got you know it's a sus. <laughs> Can we, uh, can we talk about Morell's defensive plays today? You like it? Oh, my God. That play where he, you know, the way they were aligned and he went over uh, towards the line to pick it and then make the throw while falling away. I mean, I'm, I, think, I think we're at a point where we don't have to put Nick Madrigal in for defense all the time at least. You know, yeah. I get it in certain situations. Because it's risky in losing that yes. bat later in the game. Yes. Now, we've seen that, like, come right. where, where Madrigal has come like up Brent, in a spot that Morrell would have been <laughs> as in. As soon as the play was made, Brendan tweeted, like, I don't want to see Nick Madrigal come in for defensive reasons anymore for Nick for Christopher Morrell. And it's like, after seeing him make a play like that, like, I agree. I know, I know the throwing is still, you know, we, we were talking about it off air, but last night after they gave up the lead – uh, or gave up a run or what? I, it was late in the games. It was one of the few things we didn't talk about, but he fielded a ground ball and made a bad throw, and thankfully Bush picked yeah. it, right? Um, today he was great. He made two really good defensive plays, and I think I know play. he's not hitting right now. Yeah, the double play. Um, he's not hitting right now. He had a hit yesterday, but other than that, this road trip, I, I think ever since he hit that home run in San Diego – He's not been – it's not been good. And I think a lot of people are speculating maybe that finger injury that he, you know, we saw him, like, get in San, in, Diego. in San Diego might be the reason why. But the last couple of days he has been hitting the ball hard still. So, I know the strikeouts today weren't, weren't pretty. And we, and we talked about, like, the strikeout rate was not going to stay as low as it was. We knew that it was going to go up eventually. He just got off to a hot start. Now it's all about can he – have some sort of sustained success. So, again, I know the offense isn't there right now, but it's good to see that th yeah. it's not affecting his defense. What if he wasn't hitting and the defense was still having issues? Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, and it, he, to me, it's a huge development. I think that's your baseline of, like, playability because we know we've, we saw it last year. Like, Morrell had, was it nine home runs in the first 12 games, something like that? And then, yeah. like, obviously he had his low, like pretty low lows at various points in the year after that, right? So we – we know the up and down nature of what he has at the plate, and the ba like the, the baseline of his playability is what I'm talking about. Is just can he like w when does his when does what he bring on offense just like not right. overshadowed? When, when, when is it or when does it uh, not worth, the, worth? When is it not worth having him on defense? That's what I'm the, trying to say right. Like Orange it's not worth the juice, juice not worth the squeeze, is whatever that's something saying. like that, right? Something like when that. when is his offense? When is he not producing offensively to a point where it's not outweighing what he's doing defensively? That's what you need to get to, or that's yeah. what it's always been for Morrell. And had, if he wasn't playing as well defensively as he has in the last week or so, and with the way he was swinging, you would feel. I mean, it's a small sample, so I don't want to say like you take him out, you, like it's over, but like. You would feel like a, more like, oh, man, this, they, they can't keep playing this guy. He might need a day. He might need a day. We see that in the chat all the time, right? But he is playing defense well. And so when you're bringing up your baseline of your playability and your value, then you can go through these slumps because you're not also costing the team defensively. Right. You're at least playing good enough defense that you can stay out there and have some kind of impact on it. And not to say he has been – Perfect, or even necessarily. No, I'm not even saying that. good enough at third, but he has the last couple of weeks have been better, yes. and let's just say he hasn't been alone in the moments that he, where he's had bad defense. He's not alone in that around baseball. How like I know the Cubs have coughed up a lot of runs with errors, and we've seen Dansby struggle. We've seen mm -hmm. Nico had an Nico error. Had we've today. seen Nico struggle. We've seen Morrell struggle. Like a lot of guys have struggled, and on the other teams. The Diamondbacks were throwing the ball all – they were just in the World Series. They were throwing the ball all over the place. And then think back to the Rockies and the Dodgers. Like, it was like everybody was just letting the ball go to the outfield wall. <laughs> it, was, it was – honestly, I've never yeah. seen anything like it early this yeah. season. The defense in the games that I've watched around Major League Baseball, which are mostly Cubs games. Right. The defense has been – Well, sus. To, to that point, yeah, like the first 10 games – 
10, what game, how many games have we played now? If they're 11 and 7. 11 so 18. 18. 18. I would say yeah, the first. Valpo math. I would say <laughs> the first 10 games for sure, I, you know, I was definitely emphasizing the bad defense. But I do think on the road trip, the defense was a lot better. Now, Nico making that error today wasn't good. And I was definitely really pissed about Dansby not making the play last night. But I feel like. Overall, the defense as a whole has gotten better since like the first ten games of the year, and I could, I'm spitballing on the amount of games. Does it need to be better as a whole? Yes, because the Cubs are built on defense. Their team is built on being a good defensive team. Um, honestly, in some ways, you can argue the defense, like Dansby not making that play last night, is why they lost. In some ways, you can say. Uh, so you know, thankfully, that Nico's error didn't hurt them today. Uh, I think when he made that error, that's when Wesneski came in and he got out of it uh, for Wicks to to keep his, uh, you know, to save his final line. Uh, but, yeah, man, like, the the defense in general, I would say it's been improved over the oh, during the road trip. And, you know, I brought up Morrell because, like, people, a lot of people have been criticizing it enough to a point to where he shouldn't be over there at all. And I... I think people need to acknowledge that he's he's made improvements over there. And I do want it to get to a point to where the Cubs don't feel like they have to bring in Madrigal yeah. late in the game because, no, I don't want Nick Madrigal in the four hole. Like, I found myself defending Nick Madrigal yesterday because people were uh, complaining about uh, Council putting Madrigal in, and he was in the four hole. And it's like, well, first off, he's done it many times. So I'm not like, why are we criticizing it? Uh, and then... Also, like, I agree at the same time because I don't want Madrigal in the four hole. So, I, that's what you that that's what they need. They need Morel to com, to continue to improve defensively at third. And it's very clear that the ones where he doesn't think are the plays that he can make. But I do think he's done well with the routine plays so far too, at least on this road trip. Yeah, when, no, when the you last pitchers, week's been better for sure. When you have pitchers that pitch to contact. You want to have confidence that your defense is going to get the job done. Just like when you take your dry cleaning, you want to have confidence that you're getting a good price, you're getting your stuff done right, and you're going to get it quickly. CD One Price Cleaners. Customers save over 30% on the dry cleaning bill by switching to CD One Price Cleaners. Simple, transparent service. Other cleaners charge a different price for every garment type. Plus, they have upcharges, and they may charge you a different price each time you visit. At CD One Price Cleaners, we charge you one low price on any garment. Yeah, that's right. Even those sports jerseys you like to wear, same one low price. And a fast turnaround, too. It's the same day or the next day. That's it. There's nothing else. Other cleaners take two to four days to have your garments clean and ready. Plus, CD One Price Cleaners gives you a text alert when it's done, so you know exactly when you can go pick up your dry cleaning uh, at the store. They offer dry cleaning, wash and fold laundry, Blankets, comforters, tailoring, alterations, leather cleaning, area rug cleaning. Visit chgo.cd1.com. That's O-N-E. Link in description. Once you're there, you can pick from an in-store coupon or online pickup and delivery coupon options. Love them. There's one right by my house, and they come through for me. Speaking of coming through for you, are you in the market for a new vehicle? If you are, pay attention to this. Please. Great news for you. Our partner, Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Fox Lake, is celebrating the Jeep celebration event all month long. And you know what that means. You'll be able to rave about their savings on a wide selection of inventory. For a limited time, lease a new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo Altitude for $439 a month for 39 months. And if that Grand Cherokee isn't big enough for you, check out the third row and lease a new 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited L for four seventy nine dollars a month for 39 months at Ray CDJR. You're always able to shop one of Chicagoland's largest inventories and drive home with more money in your pocket than you'd expect thanks to their Ray Price Promise. Don't miss out. Shop great deals all month long and save big because at Ray CDJR, they make buying a new vehicle more affordable than ever. But that's not all. Just for listening, you can get a free oil change when you mention CHGO, four important letters in the alphabet, CHGO, at the service center or mention CHGO when you book online at Ray CDJR slash service. You got to schedule it before April 30th. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, 
then you have to check out our team at Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram because they are the only team we recommend. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, visit Ray CDJR in Fox Lake or RayCDJR.com, serving the community since 1963. Uh, someone in the chat said that you had a great transition there, so you they're Cut. not sus. Credit yeah. to me. You're not so, sus. You're not one of the sus. And someone else in the chat asked what you think about Riz. Sus. Riz is sus? Riz is, Riz is sus. Riz? Like Rizzo? No. <laughs> the word, the <laughs> word Riz. The word Riz? Oh, that's sus. That's sus. Riz is sus? Okay. You don't Riz? I don't even know what it means, but it sounds Riz. You didn't. And you sus. Bill's not old enough to know what Riz is. Yeah. What's Riz? It's just like a slang like, thing. Uh, For what? That, like the kids are using. What Charm is it? maybe is the best way to put it. Yeah. Charm? Yeah. When Charm. you're really good at talking to a lady. Yeah. yeah. Like you rizzed up your wife however long ago. <laughs> Credit to you. Credit to me. Yeah. You got married, had a couple kids. That's really right. Rizzed up to me. He rizzed up his wife. <laughs> Grandpa Stucky. Hell yeah, brother. Every day, Max says. <laughs> no, I just, all I was was not sus, and she was happy with that. She's like, that's good enough. Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> so Tyone possibly appears starting tomorrow against the Marlins, weather permitting. Yeah. Uh, I heard him on the radio, first of all, talking about uh, some of the guys, uh, what he's been watching and seeing. And he said, really, he only didn't throw for like four days. He said the timing of it was just bad with the back, and then they wanted to make sure it was right. So he's been out a little bit longer than maybe he really needed to be, in his opinion, but it was like the right thing to do, and the timing was bad. He did point out that he believes... Javier Saad could be, the ass man, could be the MVP of the pitching staff. The last Remember when Mark Leiter Jr. he's been so he versatile. Was, yeah. Remember when Mark Leiter Jr. said the ass man was, like the, best, one of the, best the, one the best pitchers in that baseball? One of the best pitchers in baseball. Tyone my, basically I, that was my came question. out and said it. <laughs> that was to my question. I mean, that, that comment was a little sus. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, See how I'm using this? Like, Red, I'm a, rela- I like this. Relation, credit to Ryan. It was his question. Thank you. It it was in Ryan. relation to uh, Tyone... He has been he's been like the Cubs hype guy on yeah. uh, social media. Yeah. Like Cade Horton pitched last night, and he replied to I think MLB Pipeline's tweet saying like Cade Horton's going to be a problem or something like that. Um, uh, I mean, take it however you want to take it. I think it's cool when other other guys on the team are hyping guys up. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, as far as Tyone going tomorrow, I think it's a great matchup for him to you know get off to a decent start because a the marlins are off to a terrible start this year their offense hasn't been very good jake Berger is on the injured list um tim anderson hasn't you know bounced back with the marlins yet he hasn't got hot for them yet um and i can't think of any well jazz chisholm i don't know how well he's off to this season either way the marlins they're last i checked they're four and 14 so i just think that this it's yeah. kind of like what I said about Imanaga making his first career start against the Rockies. Like, ease him in a little bit, you know? It's better than Tyone having to go out and face the Dodgers, you know? Yeah. Yes. You know but what I mean? So Facing Tim uh, Anderson is better than facing well, the Dodgers. And again, with no this offense. why... Well, are are we, you sure, Luke? <laughs> yeah. well, yes. that's, again, why we talk about why what Wisniewski did today was so big, because mm. now you have potentially more options available if you want to not push Tyone too long, which yeah. I think is the right call for tomorrow, then you, I mean, whatever, however long it is, four or five innings, whatever, then you do have more available arms, and you maybe would have had Wisniewski doubt not what did what he did today. But, yeah, no, I'm, with Tyone, it's just like, he struggled for, like, four months last year. I thought the last post-All-Star break which was, good. was uh, it wasn't, like, great by any means, but good. it was... He showed better signs and, and had a little bit more consistency uh, in his starts in the second half last year. A little bit more of like what you would what you were hoping for from Tyone. Um, and, you know, first year of a bigger contract, first year of the new team, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you'd like to think that that doesn't play into it, but God, they're, they're human and stuff like that does have an impact on, on in various ways. So I am, for Tyone, I'm intrigued to see what he could do because I do think – what he did last year in the second half was a sign that he was improving. And, you know, remember we talked to Tommy Hadovy when he was on the show uh, back in February before spring training. And we, uh, it was, I think it was to Brendan's question about Tyone. And he was talking about the fact that, like, Tyone was 
while pitching was also working through mechanical issues. So not only was he was doing things to to get right, but they weren't going to lead to immediate results. So it was like like living through that and like knowing and believing that you were going to come like once you're you're through this process, the results were going to come, but you had to deal with it at the time. So like that probably plays a part in it a little bit mentally too. So I, but I do think the, the, the results, the better results we saw in the second half are a good sign of what we could see from Tyone. It may not come right away. He may be eased in, he may be on pitch count or whatever to start. Like who, who, who knows how they're going to do it. But, um, it's obviously a huge to get who someone who should be, uh, one of your better starters back in the rotation, considering yeah. how um, how this pitching staff has been just taxed the last two, two three weeks. Well, the, the thing about Tyone, too, and, and this goes to your point, like despite how mm-hmm. much he struggled last year, he still pitched 150 innings. You need that. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> you desperately need To help need the bullpen out. To help the bullpen, yeah. okay? So, yeah, he can't come out there and not put give you a competitive start. But at the same time, there were multiple times, even when he did have that struggle, th- those struggles, where he was able to still somehow give you a four, five, sometimes six innings, even if he did give up four or five runs. The Cubs offense has been playing pretty well. So, like, you can, you can, you can live with – you know, I'm not saying he can't go out there and give you a – I'm not saying he You'd can't like go out there. You'd yeah, like I would shove. love for him to go shoving. out there and shove. <laughs> yeah. I would prefer shoving. Three earned or less in six innings, yes. Would love to see it like what he did in his own revenge game against the Yankees last year. Absolutely. However, I am saying that he doesn't have to be perfect because his offense has been playing well right now. So, again, all I'm asking is to just eat innings because the – rotation desperately needs it that to me that's that's priority number two priority number one is just not looking like he did the first four months I think tomorrow is the perfect intro for him too. just glancing at the Marlins second worst team OPS in baseball yeah bottom five in home runs bottom five in total walks it's it's the perfect introduction to the season yeah, for like Tyone. I said the only way it's better is in Miami we're on, so. on the south side right yeah. warm yeah, be you know nicer. what I mean with a guy who be a little chilly out. Yeah, Weather wise, the only way it's better is if they're playing it on the road. Actually, yeah. Miami is bad, bad. Um, I mean, we were talking about Wesneski. Uh, I saw Marquis tweet a video that said that Craig Council was quoted saying that it was the best pitching performance of the season <laughs> by it, a Cubs pitcher. Man, people it are have been. people are really yeah. pumping up some players right now, yeah. right? In some ways, you can argue it just because, like, they desperately it was necessary. him to do it. Yeah, yeah. I think Imanaga has been best of this. Is probably impressed me the most as as far as anyone in the rotation. <laughs> but yeah, no, like, I think what he's talking about in this instance is the fact that he really helped save the the bullpen today. I do want to see, go back and watch the replay just when he comes out of the game because Council says something to him and. I think Wisniewski actually paused and looked and was like, thanks. Like, mm-hmm. actually, you know, the manager comes out a lot of times, nice job, takes the ball. I think he, he must have said something that actually caught Wisniewski's attention, like, terrific job. I mean, whatever he said to him, it was acknowledged by the pitcher that he wasn't just getting yanked out of the game and you had done a really nice job. So that, you know, yeah. that's a good confidence booster. We hope that's going to continue. We hope the winning will continue now after the Cubs win a road series here against the Diamondbacks and have a nice West Coast trip. Things worked out. It wasn't perfect, but it was good. Now they return home, and here come the Marlins. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, weather permitting. Is it and take three or f- three or four? Yeah, I think it's take three or four. At, le- at least three or four? Yeah, it's a bad team. Yeah. you got to win yeah. three out of four. Yeah. You need to win the series, I think. That's- you got to win the series. That, that's what that's what and they're they, up against, uh, and they should. Know, they should. Yeah. It's a bad team. And you got the Astros coming up, and they're off to a slow start too. So, like, not to not to say that the it's going to continue, but ideally, you play well against the Marlins, then that allows you to you know see what happens against a team like Houston, which 
whether you believe that they're going to be this bad or not, like it's no. a good test. I think that the Astros will be better than what their record is right now, right? And I, mm-hmm. yeah, I believe so. the Astros are getting Verlander back this weekend too, so he Shit. might be in that Cubs series. So yeah, yeah but see. by the way, Abreu, phew, they didn't do that signing the Cubs. Abreu has been terrible. Oh yeah, oh, he's yeah. been yeah. terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when we he's all old. thought, oh, the Cubs, it's a done deal. Yeah, Bruce Levine had him. Uh, Fitted for a uniform. <laughs> and they gave him like a five-year deal, didn't they? <laughs> Joking, Bruce. But it, three. Oh, it was three a three-year three deal? Years, and yeah. I yeah. think the reason we didn't or they didn't do it is because they only wanted to give him one. I think it was one or two, but it was like, it was like a three-year, like $61 million deal or something uh, like yeah, that. Yeah, that sounds right. Like $20 million a year. It was, it was, it was a pretty he's big old. chunk of change. Yeah. He's, an old, he's an old guy. He doesn't know what Riz means. He doesn't know what Riz <laughs> means. Speaking of which, did you know, did you see what Joe did? Joe. I'll be sure Joe Mama. Joe. Joe Mama. Joe Mama. Yo mama. What? I'm, what? What's happening? It's like yo mama. But it's, yeah, I know. Whatever you right. speak, guys. Did was Ryan just something? get old all of a sudden? What no, happened? Did Ryan good, just age 40 joke. years? It was a good joke, and you guys, you guys was a, I didn't know the worst dad joke I've ever heard. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't. It didn't land. I hope the chat it, enjoyed it. Definitely it definitely did not land. You know what? You guys, uh, you guys don't appreciate it. Good Sean, Sean thought it was funny. Thank you. Usually Sean's the one. You know what that was, Kevin? That was sus. <laughs> look at Van- that Vanilla. was sauce at right there. Sean Casale that was the definition of sauce. Those are my Good true Ryan. friends right there. Vanilla yeah. Chill liked it back. too. Ryan L. Riz. That wasn't even Riz. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I'm tired and I wasn't with it. Usually I, hear, I know a joke when I like, hear it. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what's going on. Let's take a look at who you got. Very important. We're going to have to add up these <sighs> wins because I'm starting to, the champ is starting to pile them up. The champ is here. The champ is here. That's right. What did I say yesterday in our Slack channel? I said, Slump Meyer is here to get Bellinger out of this. Yeah. It didn't stick. It was just a triple last night. It didn't stick. So, as a man of integrity, I said, I'm not leaving my man. No man left behind. Bellinger's still my guy. I got him to who he got win. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good win. I Credit guess. to me. Well, you had Bellinger. Ryan had Bush. Uh, Which Bush also had a Bush had, had a had dance. He had an four. okay game. Yeah. And then uh, there the were some okay games in there. Two for four for Bush. Two for five for Cody Dan did his B. master bony thing. Yeah. Listen, all right. Someone on Twitter, someone on Twitter, like sent me like Master Boney's like box scores for like all seven games he's played this year. Um, (laughs) He hit three ball baseballs over ninety five miles per hour today and didn't make an error in the outfield. And I'm not even really defending the guy. All I'm saying is, like, like just lower your expectations. We understand what he is. He is a utility guy off the bench. And to me, and this is very big of me to say because I'm the only one who will defend this guy in the world. It feels like. When you bring wisdom back, to me, it sounds like that's who you're sending back. And that's I'm okay with that because they need the power. Yeah. All right? Mastro. Yeah. As much as I really just – it's very hard for me to not want to yell about Nick Madrigal all the time. I get it. All right? So, uh, again, credit to me. I wore the I'm not – I'm ready to be hurt again shirt, and I took Mastro for who you got, and the Cubs won. Yeah. We no, didn't I, mention uh, it. Did you see somebody mm-hmm. mention the bunt in there? Yeah, the bush. For bush. I thought the that should have given him yeah. like four points. Can anybody the, confirm that? Got. Stucky stats, do, we, didn't, we don't keep track of that. Was that the first Cubs bunt of the year? Ooh. I think I it was. Attempted I don't like bunt for one. a hit. Bunt for a hit? I would think so. I think it was they the definitely first haven't, I think They definitely be, haven't sack bunt because the chat's been screaming about the fact that we haven't sack bunted. That's the true. Last, the last week, completely which is so crazy to me because so many people bitched about bunting last year. <laughs> that was a bunt I'm okay with. I know he's he's had like five home runs in seven games or whatever, but yeah. we're just going to give him the whole left side of the infield. Yeah. yeah you like, should pay for it in some way. Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard, and that's why. They win a bet. <laughs> yeah, it keeps him honest. <laughs> yeah, it keeps him honest, that. and it's a hard thing to do. It's not easy, and that's why a lot of guys, when they get that much space, on the left side, panic. don't do it, or like, yeah, panic, or just don't get the bunt down, whatever. Uh, so it's obviously a good, a very good job by him to get the bunt down, get it far enough that um, he can get over to first base. And uh, yeah, I think that should steal the who you got win. Just mm. uh, no. sacrificing no, who you got for Cubs W's. That's all I do. What Credit was the time me. on the beer bat chug again? Nine, nine something. I had under ten. 10. I had ten point oh seven. We both had nine had, something. Yeah, so we said, all right, we'll under ten. We'll go under 10. 
Well, or ten if you missed we'll, it. We'll check the uh, the ofi- wasn't it? the official Cody Beer Bat Chug page on Twitter. Yeah, I was just gonna say yeah. they they we tweeted. Back, we should go back through <laughs> the logs of the games. Whoever and actually made have that. an average. We should have an average. <laughs> well, they should have who, a batting average. Like whoever uh, may ha- runs the page has the average of it. Yeah, like they, they I was. Give the, they, oh, they, they do. They tweeted the update, it. Yeah. The update of the like the score from that day or the time. From and then that what day. the season average and is. The season average. Yeah. Yeah. And, and has it been updated? Yeah, it is. They they tweeted forty five minutes ago. That's incredible. We tweeted it to CHGO Cubs. Um. See, we know this it's, isn't Cody doing it himself I'm not because he doing doesn't it. math. I, I he doesn't swear, matter, so I swear on my like past grandparents' graves. It's right? none of I us, right? Nobody this. here. No, um, I don't math. I couldn't do it. Yeah, and also I don't math, right? Uh, it says that I got a nine point seven three. Okay, all right. And then he said Season the average? average for the West Coast road trip. <laughs> Was a nine point seven nine. <laughs> okay, but he doesn't have the season average. Oh, season season average is ten point three nine. Oh, okay. And what's your BABIP? Uh, he doesn't have that, brother. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a stat. But whoever keep. made this account, it is. I like funny. it. I mean, yeah. that, actually, keeping stats is yeah. that's powerful. See, this is Sean thinks it's Colada. One might say <laughs> one might say this is Dalmetrics, but like again, BBA beer bat. I don't know how they're coming up with these numbers. The the, the Twitter handle should be sponsored by, powered by Dell Metrics. <laughs> powered, powered by, by Del yeah, Metrics. yeah. Like the the bio says tracking the times and other stats for every Cody underscore CHGO beer bat chug following every Cubs win, presented by, you know, or powered by whatever you guys just Del Metrics. Yeah, presented powered by, by Dell Metrics. Yeah, powered by Dell Metrics. Presented by Blue Moon. There you go. Yeah, powered by Del Metrics. And Circa, of course, always Circa. circa. Yeah. circa. Uh, Hopefully, the homie's listening and he'll do it. Yeah. Before we go. <laughs> Uh, make sure you hit the like button on the way out one more time. Remind everybody about Friday. So they got 48 hours here to 120 Club it. Get your ticket at yes. game time. Yes. Buy your yeah. own bleacher ticket. Yep. And then meet Cody and Braggs and the crew at Murphy's 930, 10 o'clock, something like that. I would say 10 10-ish. because 10 we learned better. that they don't open till 10 the first time we went because Braggs and Sarah and... Uh, Emma showed up at 9.30, and they wouldn't let them in <laughs> the first Friday. So, yeah. 10. Yeah. 10 a.m. So, you guys will be there, and then hopefully you can all sit together, left field bleachers like last time, get yeah. on TV, seventh inning stretch, Cody we're gonna have a No, let's go, have, Cubs, go. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a sign. Again, I'm not, I already kind of told you guys what it is, but I'm not revealing it on the show. Well, I saw that Avi shirts, they're going to have – they have the Shoda T-shirts he, he had yeah. made. Oh, yeah. One letter – you guys got to one up that. Just paint yeah. it on your chest. So we Tyone pitches tomorrow. Who's pitching Friday? Shoto. Shoto. Yeah. yeah. Shota. So we get the we get a Shoto game on Friday. Yeah. One twenty oh, yeah. club vibes. Hopefully oh, yeah. the sun is out. Hopefully oh, that's yeah. Hope I don't. Of, hope I don't have a hangover at seven sure. p.m. like I did in the first one. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> on you. <laughs> that's on me. Yeah. That, well, also, uh, Braggs had me doing shots at nine a.m. That didn't help. That's either. true. It says Friday is supposed to be sunny, uh, a little bit colder, but still with the sun out. Yeah. So there you go. Tomorrow's, tomorrow's weather, weather a little more sus than coming up on Friday. So it could yeah. be a doubleheader. Who knows? We'll see. Just got a super chat. Uh, oh, one more. Su- we got more super chats? Uh, just two more. Yeah. Two Fernando. More? Fernando. Yeah. yeah. Michael, Michael Bush. Bush. Let me tell you. Go Cubs. He's, and Bear he's Forever 14 for $2. Well, it was a great day. Go Bulls, <laughs> I guess. Oh, man. LOL. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right? Bulls, I guess. A Bulls might ruin your Listen, day, honestly. Just, just go on to Circa and place some bets. That will give you some yeah. sort of incentive to watch that game. Actually, I take it back. I said the Bulls might ruin your day. If you're still letting the Bulls ruin your day this late into the year, yeah. then... We're not you, telling you how to bowl. You're not telling, you're not telling you how to cub. <laughs> but... But that would be Bulls, my thought, too. The Bulls can't ruin my day anymore no, this neither. season. Next no. season, for sure. This season, they can't ruin my yeah. day anymore. Thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast. We appreciate it. Uh, make sure you hit the like button on the way out. Cubs win 5-3 over the Diamondbacks. They are now 11-7 and on the season, closing in on first place. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Pre-game show at 6. Oh, yeah. And then a full hour after the game, Ryan's going to be at the ballpark. Mm-hmm. Cody and I will be right. here. We're going to wash out the beer bat and have it ready to go. And we're going to keep Luke awake. I'm going to have lots of caffeine in me. Until then, thanks for watching and fly the W.